Hey there, this is Nick, and we are continuing on with Builder Trend. And I wanted to take one more specific lesson digging into the schedule. The previous videos, I let you know that the schedule is absolutely the anchor of everything you do in Builder Trend. So I want to spend just one more lesson making sure we dig into a few hacks that if you don't know about them, you're probably missing out on a little bit. So bear with me. I promise you this is going to be super valuable for really turning your Builder Trend into a really powerful tool for you. All right, so what we're going to talk about related to dos, tags, multiple dependencies, and establishing a critical path. Now, these are way better when I show you, okay, because a lot of this stuff is like, well, what use case would it make sense in? And what I'm going to show you is a few different examples of use cases that might make sense, but you're going to take your business, your situation, your projects, and probably identify a few other ways that this can all be useful to you and your business. So let's dig in. Let me show you what we're talking about here in BT. So we have my schedule. And if you haven't watch the previous videos on schedule, I recommend you do that because we establish a little bit of a baseline of what we're talking about here. And we're taking this exact same example, the same sample project and carrying it forward. Now, what I've done here is quite obviously, as I extended the schedule, I, I made a lot more to it. So I added quite a few scheduling items to it. And I want to talk about some of the things that we did here. Okay. And the first is tracking, uh, multiple dependencies, okay? So we looked at dependencies, these arrows indicate what those dependencies are for us, right? And so we, we have that, we have many cases where we might have multiple dependencies, okay? And so an example of that would be maybe final plumbing, okay? So your finished plumbing is something that is typically going to require that your wall tile is done so you can install those shower fixtures as well as your countertops. So you can install those service mount sinks. So when you look at an item like this, if we look at our predecessors, two items right there, wall tile, you know, as soon as the wall tile is done, I can do my finished plumbing. As soon as the countertop is installed, I can do my finished plumbing, but I've given myself a one day lag there as well, because we want the silicone to dry and all that. Now, you might not run things this tight, but at a minimum, we have a one day delay. So we want to be able to track that for sure. Okay, so we have multiple items there. And there, what the system will do is we have our wall tile that if this moves out, okay, finished plumbing's gonna move out. And likewise, if my countertop moves out, um, finished plumbing's gonna move out. So let me just bounce that over there. And there you can see finished plumbing moved, even though my countertop's still over here. If this whole thing moves in like this, my finished plumbing will not go further than the countertop because we have multiple dependencies there. Super powerful. You can do up to three as of this recording in Builder Trend, up to three dependencies. If you need more than that, just create like subtasks. So we did a rough ends complete one over here. So we can make this dependent on a few things and then make other things dependent on the rough ends complete. So you can nest them if you need to. All right. It's not too difficult to do that. Okay, um, so that's pretty cool. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was tagging. I wanna dig deeper into that, show you a few examples and things that uh, I've found useful. So we talked about you know, how we can do something um, for inspections. I think that's a really good one. And what we're looking for here is, is there a way to filter my schedule? And tags are a great way to do that. So a couple others that we found useful are deliveries. Okay, so um, it's not a bad idea to have deliveries in your schedule. Right? You don't want it to muck up too much. That's why tags are good because you can filter them in or out. So this plumbing fixture delivery, this is something where, you know, instead of using something like milestone, I might have something specifically like delivery. So I've got that one right there. Okay. And uh, let's see what else I would maybe need. I have a drywall delivery, which would be tagged as such. And then also a hardwood delivery. Okay. So I got my hardwood delivery here and is tagged as a delivery. Now what I can do with this is I can filter either my Gantt or my list, but in either case, there's my Gantt filtered, okay? A list is a really good way to use tags, okay? So if I take my entire list, everything that I could possibly ever need to do, and I can filter this by delivery, Okay, this is a really good list. So if you have like a deliveries coordinator or somebody on your team who's specifically responsible for deliveries, tagging all of those items as delivery, and then you can do the entire project stack as well, not just this project, but all your projects. Now, of course, we want to assign tasks as well, and that's a good way to do it as well. But this is a cool way to really like if you're doing a schedule review and you really need to think about logistics, or maybe there's somebody else we need to line up, maybe the customer needs to know, being able to filter this by in this case, delivery is really, really valuable. Another similar use case we found would be like a designer milestone. 
So what happens a lot is they, we're about to start a project or we're gearing up and we have a designer, an architect, some kind of design professional who will ask the question, hey, when are you going to be ready for cabinets? When are you going to be ready for carpet? When are you going to be ready for tile? And the quick answer is, well, here's access to Builder Trend and you should check it out, right? That would be great, but not everybody logs into Builder Trend. Not everybody's super excited about it. And that's understandable. That's okay. They have their own systems. But one thing you can do is within your schedule, we're going to control here. Let's tag a few of those items as uh, something that we think the designer might want to know. And we do the same thing with the list. So for example, uh, cabinet day, install cabinets, right? That's usually one where we kind of want them to be aware. Hey, what's cabinet day? So I'm going to put there and maybe I'll do, um, let me add one designer. Okay. Okay. So that one, good cabinets. You want to know when cabinets are going to happen. Uh, when is finished electrical going to happen? Now this might be, this might be a little bit of a redundancy with your selections. Okay. So decide what makes more sense. If you're doing this already with selections, meaning your selections are tied to this and the designer has the selection schedule, then that's maybe a better way to do it. Uh, maybe something like paint uh, samples could be up there as well. Let me just do one more rough electric. I'll put one on there as well. Okay. And just like we did with our deliveries, we can then go to our list and we can say, all right, Hey, give me, um, all of the designer related stuff. All right. And we can then either publish this list or just direct them to this link. In either case, it's going to be really helpful that we can filter it down. Remember that this schedule can and will get gigantic, but the fact that we can filter and, and drag things in or out is going to be really, really useful to us. One other thing that I do is invoicing and tying my invoices to the schedule. Absolutely. We do that. Okay. So as a reminder, if I go over to my invoices here, these are all typically going to be linked to the schedule, especially if you're doing fixed price. Okay. So I got my project deposit where it's dependent on the production start. If the production start moves out, then the deadline moves out. So if I move my production start out a week, let's go ahead and do that. If I start on July 1st, instead of June 24th, it's going to mean that my deadline for that invoice is going to move as well. Okay. So that's really, really useful. And then watch this. Uh, you're going to see the dates on these ones move as well because everything else moved in the schedule. The whole schedule moved out. That's how powerful this whole thing is. But as you can see here, we've got invoices related to certain aspects of the schedule. That's really useful. Now on my schedule itself, I like to use the calendar view and on this view going to filter and adding other items, for example, owner invoices. This is a really helpful thing for me to see as somebody who's doing the invoicing to understand when there's a project start invoice, there's a rough ends complete. What I like to do as well is I will tag certain uh, schedule items that are invoice driving. Okay. Now I wish that we could automatically do that based on the fact that uh, the invoice is dependent on a schedule item. I wish that Builder Trend would pick that up, but it doesn't, at least not yet. So we have to do that manually. And so what I mean by that is like if I'm able to get paid when rough ends are complete, okay, now I see that it's here. So this is useful to me that there's an owner invoice tied to it. That's useful. But uh, one step further would be to tag it as invoice. Similar with like countertop template, if I were to take that one. Okay, so my countertop template, there's the invoice related. If I go to tags, let's make sure it's indicated as invoice. And then maybe my project start as well. Production start, payment one, excellent. Let's put my invoice on there. And then I can do the exact same thing where it's like, all right, give me my list of items that are, you know, invoice drivers. And if we're having a production meeting, that's something that becomes really important. It's like, all right, it's one thing, you know, what happens when the schedule moves, right? A lot of things. One customer might be unhappy that things are moving. Two, we have to reshuffle our subcontractors. Three, we have to reshuffle our internal resources, our deliveries, everything. And we probably don't get paid as early. Right. And so we have to think about what the implications are for the rest of our business. We might need to pivot. We might need to do some things to move some cash. Right. It happens all the time. So understanding what these tasks are that drive an invoice and having those kind of come to the fore when you're having a production meeting, really, really useful 
I'm speaking from experience. Okay, so there's some, some really cool hacks. Now, another thing that I really want you to use, and this is becoming more and more uh, prominent throughout the entire Builder Trend ecosystem, is related items. And templatizing this is really powerful as well. I'll show you that when we get into templating. But related items, and specifically I like to do related to-dos. So for example, one thing that we have going every single time we have a project is we have like a rough electrical um, checklist really, okay? And so if we go to related items, we're gonna usually have, always have a to-do, which will be something like rough electric checklist, okay? Now I might assign it to the electrician, whatever, but I'm going to link it to the schedule item. I'm gonna link it to rough electrical, okay? And I'm going to create a checklist for it. And this checklist is going to be uh, outlet height, uh, switch height. It's going to be um, garbage disposal. Do we have one? Uh, is it a electric range? Laundry. What are the things we forget about, right? And that we better know now um, before we get into things. Generator. I don't have my whole list. Our whole list is probably like 50 deep because it's really like all the things we may have forgotten in the past. Uh, recessed light size and spec, okay? Um, obviously, light fixtures we need to have. That would be more of a selections thing. Um, floor plugs, exterior plugs. Uh, hair dryers and accessories, all these things we might forget about that when we're sitting there with a um, customer, TVs, we want to at least have them on a list to reference, okay? So let me save and close that. And this, again, really good thing to templatize. And every time you miss something, you know, go and update your template. And so when we get to this task, we can, as project managers, go to this related to do and just have that checklist being available. I find that these checklists are really, really useful, not as much, although still useful for a to-do, but really just, hey, did we forget any of this stuff? And you just keep adding to it as you go, okay? Super useful, you can do the same thing for like drywall prep. So we have this thing going on that like, every time we finish our rough ends, but before drywall, we gotta add blocking, we gotta um, check for corners, we gotta take pictures, ah, such a good to-do. Um, so to do here would be your drywall, drywall punch, just like electrical, where it's like, these are the things we better do before drywall starts, right? And so it's going to be a rough in photos. So we go around and take photos with a tape measure, making sure that we know where everything is before we bury it. Um, we have blocking, we have uh, corners, uh, pretty much anything that we don't want to cover up, right? And you just build out that list, okay? So those are super useful relating to-dos. And of course, those to-dos are then gonna show up in project management as to-dos assigned to people, etc. cetera. All right, so we talked tagging, we talked about multiple dependencies, and we talked about um, those related items in the to-dos. I wanna talk a little bit about the critical path and then we'll probably put a pin in the schedule for now, of course, continuing to reference it because so much is dependent on it. Let's talk about the critical path here. Um, actually, before I do, let's talk color. So we know we can't currently change the color of these items uh, quickly, and nor can we set any defaults. What I'll do a few different things. Um, sometimes I'll have the colors match the phase, and then any of these items that are a little bit different than production, so like a delivery or an inspection, I'll maybe make a different color. So that's up to you how you want it to run. It's really annoying to update these. You have to click into every single one, at least as of this recording, there's no bulk edit on that. So think about how you might want it to happen, but it is quite a, kind of an annoying thing. Everything's gonna default to the project color initially, and you would have to change it from there. Okay, let's talk about critical path. So there's this button right here that I can turn on, which will be the critical path, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There's my critical path, Sh shows up in blue. And this really tells me and my team and everybody, hey, here's the stuff that's going to drive the end date, that if one of these items moves out, the rest of the schedule moves out. You can see we have blue versus gray. The gray things doesn't mean they're not important, but right now they're not on the critical path, meaning if they move, then it's not a big deal. Now, I'm already recognizing an issue here with my schedule. I can't hang and finish drywall until my drywall punch is complete, so I probably 
this helps me identify that I need to link these two together, right? And probably push that out. Okay, now it's on the critical path. And this electrical inspection would be as well. You know, so this helps you. Now, in my experience, almost everything ends up on the critical path, but not necessarily. Okay, so that's helpful. You can toggle that on or off. I also have not, um, it's currently offline, so I'm gonna go ahead and click it on. Okay. And it's asked me to set a baseline. So I would set a baseline for a project right before we start it. Okay, so right before production start happens, we know we're actually showing up. I would set that baseline. It's really valuable for us to um, be able to track against a plan. Okay, so we set the baseline. Now if my schedule goes offline again, just so I can move it a little bit quicker. If, say my production start moves like that, and then I'm able to make my rough electric take a little bit less time, and then my drywall, you know, takes less time as well. Then we can compare that against our baseline. Really, really helpful to understand where we started and where we're at now. So we started that we are going to um, have framing at this date, and now we're at this date. You know, we f we plan on having finished electrical this week, but it looks like it's dragging into this. So the baseline is really helpful. You can always reset the baseline, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So doing it uh, once is a really good idea. I think soon, Builder Trend might give us the ability to do multiple baselines. So we can say, here's baseline one before we started, and then like one month in, we set another one potentially. But, you know, I think that as it is right now, it's pretty darn good, all right? So, so much we can do with the schedule. We're gonna move on from the schedule in the future videos, of course, continuing to reference it, because you're gonna see it's going to pop up everywhere. Everything we do is going to be related to the schedule. So make sure you understand it. Make sure that you spend time really just with the nuances of it. And we are gonna create templates, in which case we're going to get into some best practices as well, making some things generic um, as we get into that as well. Let me know your questions. Let me know what you wanna see. There's so much the system can do. It's just like a thoroughbred horse that we're, we're trying to rev up and get ready for a race. There's so much that we can do to have it help our business out. All right, leave your comments here, subscribe so you get updates as we produce future videos as well, and I'll see you on the next video.